well, how's the person going to get their firearms back? And what happens if for some reason they don't pass a background check when they go to get their firearms back? Um, Because there are two ways. I don't know if we want to get into the weeds on this, but there, I guess there are at least three ways that somebody can temporarily store their firearms at a firearm retailer. One is the one that's been kind of um, given like a little stamp of approval by the ATF, I would say, in that this open letter that they published. And that would be if the firearm retailer had lockers that were available in kind of the floor space of the store and a customer could come in, store their firearms there, put their own lock on it, and the retailer doesn't have access to it because the owner has put the lock on. Um, We've heard a lot of feedback from retailers that that's probably the least desirable option for them because using up floor space is like losing money for them. And a lot of them are on a thin margin um, in terms of their profits. And so giving up that floor space is tough. Um, There also, I guess, could be some issues with safety, like concerns about the store getting broken into um, and and those lockers being able to be breached, whereas the space that's in the back might be be more secured or stronger cabinets. Um, And, you know, from the point of view of mental health and suicide prevention, that's maybe a less desirable option. Like you could look at it like the pro of it is that the person doesn't have to say anything about their mental health struggles, doesn't have to talk to anybody, can just go in and store the firearms. And so they are getting them out of the house. But maybe the con is that they're not really talking to anybody, they're not opening up to anybody and they're not getting connected to any resources, which is part of what we're trying to do. Um, So anyway, that's one option. The second option is a gunsmithing and cleaning someone can bring their firearms in to get some gunsmithing and cleaning. They're typically leaving them. It's still got to go in, in a, in a book, right? You'll say which one Kayla, but it's still got to go in a book if it's left more than 24 hours. Um, but, but when the person comes back to get them, they don't have to do a background check. Um, and Caleb, I know you're going to jump in and, and sort of add to this, but I'll just say quickly, the third option is a temporary storage hold, which Caleb is talking about where, Um, the person may have, they'll have to pass a background check when they come back to get their firearms. And there is the chance they won't pass it. We can talk in a minute. We actually try to come up with some contingencies and SOPs and things like that about what to do in that case so that both the retailer and the firearm owner feel like they're covering the bases as much as possible to be transparent about that and have a conversation about that. But I'm going to hold there because I can see Caleb has something to add. And then we can talk a little bit about how we talk about that being handled within the Armory Project. Yeah, and, and like she was saying, the ATF sent out an open letter about having storage lockers. And in retail, you know, square footage is dollars. Um, I don't, I understand that mindset. I don't adhere to it because I like open space. It encourages people to walk. I have stools and benches and bars set up for people to sit at because I find that the community engagement is worth, is worth more than a higher profit margin. Um, but we take them in either on repair. So it goes in the gunsmithing bound book. And while it's here, I hold them for up to a year and I legitimately gunsmith them. I will clean them. I will repair them. I will make sure everything's done. And we legitimately work on your firearms. And if you take it in on the gunsmithing side for repair, you legally have to. So we do that at no charge to the customer. Uh, understand that Federal law already accounts for that. Let's say you're having thoughts of suicide or someone in your family is, or maybe you're concerned about them. You can bring their firearms to a, the police department and the police department will hold them. Depending on law, they can hold them for up to 90 days and then they become the property of the agency and they don't legally have to give them back. They're also not maintaining them during that time. So that's why I like doing the repair aspect of it because I'm going to maintain your firearms. And to date... Every firearm I've taken in on repair has left my shop in better condition than it came in. The other is a consignment hold. The consignment hold, we have a discussion up front. Look, this is what's going on in your life. This is where you are. If you think you may want to sell this eventually, or you want to transfer ownership to someone else in your family, we take it on a consignment hold because then the thought process is someone else may possess this firearm. And in my contract, we lay out, John Smith, you're going to give this to Jane Doe if you don't come pick it up. Uh, She has your written permission. I have a copy of the driver's license, all this that says she can come get it or whoever it is. 
And if whoever it is, when I take it on a consignment hold, a 4473 must be done legally. And then we do the 4473 and it goes to live at whatever household that was agreed upon. But that's, that's the end goal to this is I don't want it on my bound books for a year. I want it to go back to the owner because when you, I'm holding over a hundred firearms right now. And some of these have, are generational firearms. I want someone else's son, someone else's daughter, someone else's grandchild to have the same joy that I've had growing up, that they had growing up and keep these firearms in your family. Cause it, it means something to me to have these firearms that are passed down generation, generationally and to continue the traditions that our forefathers had. 